Hello, I'm Crafty Patty, and thank you for stopping by. This year, I'm going to start it out by finishing projects. You're not going to believe this, but this quilt has been sitting in a bin for over 23 years. Oh, that's terrible. And every time I go in my closet, I see the bin, I'm going, I've got to finish that. So you have encouraged me to get it done because we're going to make this together and finish it together and you can see how this is done. This quilt is reversible so you've got a design on one side and you've got a design on the other side. You make it by forming your little blocks first and you're doing the quilting as you go on your one little block and then you add your sashing on to one and then you do another block add the sashing on, make your strips, sew your strips together, and then you end with your binding. And as you can see, I haven't finished doing this one. So I'm going to flip this over so you can get an idea of what the back side pattern looks like. And as you can see on the back side, I've accented with more blacks, and then I've just got the two color scheme on the back. So I've got my batik butterfly I call it, and then all my triangles or squares of black. Let's say that would be one of the squares right there. And if I was to flip this over, that's the other side. I should go over a few more things before we actually start the sewing so this makes more sense to you. Now this isn't my design. This is a class I took many years ago, 23 years ago, with Sharon Pedersen. Now she has kindly made out some charts here and this might help you as well. So in the design here, let's look at my one square here. You can see we've got a solid color and we've got the dots. Let's have the dots represent that those are our stripes. So here is our solid. Here's our stripes. So on the other side of your quilt, it will be like this. So let's pretend this is our one square here. This is our quilting. This is our solid piece. Let's turn the quilt over and this one will now be this square. So when we turn that over, this is our pattern and this is our solid. So I don't know if that helped to make any more sense or it made it more confusing, but that gives you a guide if you want to follow that when you put your pieces together. And I'll put all the information about the sizing and all the strip information, the material information in the description box below the video. So don't worry about having to write it down as we go. Obviously a cutting mat, you'll need a nice sharp rotary cutter. You'll want a long ruler for your Omni grid. I use the Omni grid rulers and you'll want a 12 inch square that's got the diagonal line in it. You want, of course, the thread that's going to work for you. I have a lot of black, so I needed the black for my black side. And I chose a blue color that would match up on a lot of my blue colors that would match up for all of these. So choose a color that will match for that. Obviously, your sewing machine. And if you do have a walking foot, that is helpful. And you're going to cut all your squares at nine inches by nine inch. For your material triangles, you start by cutting. Now just pretend this is all the same piece of fabric. I've used them up because I've already started most of the quilt. So I'm giving you an example here. So you're going to make your squares nine and a half by nine and a half. And then once you've got your squares cut, you're going to cut at the diagonal and cut those all in half. Then you're going to cut all your spare scraps and you can cut these any width that you want. 
It doesn't matter what width, they can all be varied. In fact, the different widths are better. On this one here, you can see I've got a little one, got a bigger one, some narrow ones, and a larger one. So just make them all different. You're also going to have to cut a whole pile of sashings. This one is cut at one and one eighth inch. That will be one side of your sashing that goes on the edge to bring these together and sew them together. And then on the other side, you're going to be doing another sashing. And this one will measure one and three quarters. And then you fold this in half and iron it. And that gets placed on the other side. Now again, you don't have to use black for your sashing or your binding, but that's just what I'm using because it matches both my sides because I chose to use the black. And you'll also need enough to do your binding to go all around the quilt. So you need to measure all around your quilt to see how much you've got. And I'm gonna cut these at three and a half inches. When you need to add your next strip, you're gonna have your one strip coming horizontally, and then you're gonna place your next strip going up vertically, matching up your corners or your edge here and your edge here. And then all you do is you sew from this corner to this corner, and then once you've cut it off, when you bring this back down, you've got your continuous strip of binding. Once you've got them all joined together, then you take it to the ironing board and you fold it in half and iron it so you've got the crease down the middle. And this is how you're going to start it. You're going to start with your first half triangle. Let's place that up onto the left corner. And these ends, we're going to fall over about a quarter inch on both sides. That's what you want. Just make sure that you've got this one right up into the corner. On top of your full triangle, you're going to put your second triangle. This is the back side of my quilt where you saw all my black. After that is sewn, it's going to open up and it will become this. But we're not finished yet. We're going to do some more sewing all at the same time. Now, what you need to do is very carefully pick this up by both corners, and we're going to turn it around to the other side. I didn't do that very good, but I think we're still okay. And now on the same side where you've got your triangles on the back side, we're gonna work on your front side now. Place your full triangle up on the corner there, match it up as best you can. And then you're going to grab your first strip of fabric that you want to place here to make all your strips. And here's a strip here. And once you've placed these on, don't worry about the length or anything because you're going to be cutting this off and then you can use the remainder for another piece. And then we're going to pin all those layers in place. I'm just pinning it further away so I can make sure I can get in here for my first sewing. And we're going to be making all quarter inch seams. Take that to the sewing machine. And as I mentioned earlier on, if you do have a walking foot, do you use it? I have a quilting foot. So I'm going to use that to now sew down all of these layers. One, two, the batting, and the other two on the other side. And I'm going to place it in the machine with just the batting on the one side and all my fabric on this side. Because I have a quilting foot, it measures at exactly a quarter inch. So I can place, blah, blah. I can place the side of my foot along my fabric and I'll know that I'm making exactly one quarter inch seams. So we'll just start right at that corner there.
and I'll sew down to the end. And right down to the last stitch there. Just take those pins out. And you can just make sure that you did in fact catch all your seams on the other side. And then what I want you to do is I want you to pull this black one forward, your black piece, if you're using black, you might not be using black, and just really finger press this open. And once it's nice and flat and pressed against, I'm just gonna pin this up on the top here and keep that up to the corner there. Now we're going to just flip this over to the other side again. And now this one is already your first strip that you've made. So find your next piece of fabric that you want to put on there. Any size, any color, anything you want. And I actually don't want the blue. I'm gonna actually like this little bit of green up in here. So I'm just gonna bring that green a little bit further up. I'm gonna match this edge to this edge and I'll pin that in place. Again, pinning it further enough apart that you can get through with your sewing machine. And now we're going to be sewing on this top side here. So this is where you have to think about your color of your bobbin thread. We're sewing on the black side, so I'll have to make sure that my bobbin thread is black. And now I'm sewing these two and I'm going right through and quilting the black on the other side at the same time. And here's the strip that we've just sewed. This is gonna come over. And we've now got our second strip. And at the same time, we have quilted our other side. Cool, huh? And you're just gonna keep adding more strips until you've filled up your square. Here's my next one. And I'll take that and sew along, quarter inch seam again. And you just keep going and filling it up. And don't forget to take that one pin out that was holding your fabric together. And that will be my last piece. And of course, you just make sure that that last piece has got your corner covered, and it has. And just to make it a bit easier for me, I'm just going to trim off some of these little ends here so they're not in my way. And all of those can go into our next square. Now, the reason we made this square nine and a half inches, so you've got a good inch so you can get it squared up perfectly. Now, your 12 by 12 inch Omnigrid rulers is perfect because in the center here, let's hope you can see this, there is a line going through the middle of the ruler. This diagonal line is what you're going to match up to the diagonal line in your seam here. So let's match that up so it goes right along our seam. And this is how you can get a nice true square. Now we're wanting to cut those first two corners. So we just bring our ruler down until we've got our edge here showing and enough of our edge here we're not quite there, so we're just gonna bring it down just a little bit more. And I'm still watching that my center diagonal line is true to my fabric underneath, or as much as I can. And then once I'm sure that I've got enough here, I can go up a little bit more. Then I can cut off my first two edges. And now that I've got these two done, I can cut my other two. 
So what I need to do is I need to bring this up to my eight and a half inch mark. So here's my eight inches here, and here's eight and a half. So that's the marker that I can come up and match up the edge of my fabric here. And on this side, find my eight and a half, and my eight and a half is right there. Again, making sure that this diagonal line is right true to the middle. I'm just gonna turn this a bit because I'm left-handed. There we go. And then we're gonna cut off this edge. And we're gonna cut off this edge. And now we have a true eight and a half beautiful square. And we've got it already quilted on the back. Now, what I'm going to tell you is, so you don't have to keep changing your bobbin thread, because if I was going to quilt this side now, I would have to change my bobbin thread to teal and not black. So what I like to do is I go through and I do all my squares first in the black bobbin. And then when I've got all my black sides done, then I change my bobbin thread and then I come back and I do this side. So just to show you, I'm gonna change my bobbin thread now so I can match up these colors, which will be all my teals. And then I'll show you what we do to quilt this side. Again, I'm gonna just place a pin by pulling the back fabric and the front fabric just to make sure they're definitely not moving so they don't slip. And now the trick to get nice straight lines is this. Cut yourself some little strips of paper, all different sizes. They can be one inch, one and a half inch, even two and a half inch, any size, it doesn't matter. And what these are gonna be used for is a guide so when you go to do your quilting, you just place your strip along your center diagonal line here, and then you hold that in place and you just sew along the edge of your paper. Again, I have put my blue teal thread in the bobbin, and I also have a teal blue thread on the top so it matches my top and my bottom. And that's kind of something to think about when you're working on your design of your color fabrics is to make sure there's something that will match for both that you can get away with using the same thread. But if not, then you just have to keep changing your bobbin or your top thread all the time. All right, so I'm going to match up this little piece of paper along my black fabric here. And I'll just go up to the top here. It will come close, but not obviously cutting into my piece of paper, but I'm just using it as a guide. So we'll just sew along here. And I'm just watching my little foot here that it's just slightly over the paper, but not into the paper. And we'll just use that as a nice guide. And there we have a nice straight quilted stitch on the front and as well as the back. And so now let's put our next strip on. It's nice to keep it a varied size. Let's go and have this great big one. It's a two and a half strip. I'm matching it up to my black here. And we'll just use that as a guide and sew along again. Changing up the size again. And I'm gonna put in a one and a half strip now. And this time I'm gonna match along my sewing line. And I'm gonna do just one more little one just to keep it all held together nicely. And there we go. Nicely quilted on the front and on the back at the same time. Once you have both sides of all of your squares quilted, it's time to add the sashing. Now this is where your pattern will come into to mind. So if you wanted to have all of your strips together like this, then you would put your sashing together like that. If you turn this around, 
then you're gonna have that pattern on the back. So you have to make sure that how you place these is how you want your pattern. Let's say that you're doing the very center of your quilt and you wanted to have all the same color like this in the middle, then place them together like this. And then on the back side, you're gonna have your strips and this triangle on the back. So you just have to think about a little bit how you're placing your strips together. And for my design, I have my black corner and I'm gonna have all these long squares in the middle. So I'm gonna place mine like so, because I want to have this coming all the way through like that. And on the back side, I'll have the same idea, but the stripes, and then this will be my solid on this particular piece of fabric. Now, the first thing you're going to do is you're gonna place a strip. It doesn't have to be exactly the, the length here. I've just got an extra piece here, just so I can show you what to do. I'll let it overhang just a little bit, just for the ease of sewing, because it's easier that way an inch and three quarters folded in half. And now with the open side, this is going to go on the other side and we're gonna sew all of these three together. All of my fabric is matching up nicely. And then we'll pin in place, pinning a little bit further back so I can get my quarter inch seam allowance in there. So continue to go along, matching up all of my seams. I'm just making sure I catch this fabric on the back. And we're gonna take that to the machine and sew it with a quarter inch seam allowance all the way down through this sashing my quilt square in the bottom sashing. Now I am working with black sashing. I should have changed my um, thread probably to black, but I'm just kind of showing you how to do this. I'm not gonna use these squares. This is just a demonstration because I've already got all my squares made, but I would normally change this to black thread, but this way you can see what I'm doing. You've got your single sashing, your folded over sashing is on this side and you still have your fabrics in the right position. What I want you to do now is I want you to take this one and flip it over on top of this one, like so. This one's gonna stay back, the sashing, but I want you to open up this sashing and bring it forward like that. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to slide it back so that raw edge matches up with this raw edge of the square underneath. So you're going to pin that in place and we're going to sew a quarter inch down here. Again, I'm sewing my one piece of my sashing sorry, to my quilt square underneath here one quarter inch seam allowance. Just take those pins out. And I'm gonna show you, there's our sashing that we've made in between this side of our two squares. Isn't that cool? So this is already done. Now this side is what you do. See, there's all your inside, your quilt seams that are all the inside. And now this comes over and we hand stitch that in place. And I'll show you how I hand stitch that. To make it stronger, I like to double my thread and how I tie my knot is I wrap it around my finger, I roll it, and then pull down, 
and I've made my knot. So I'm just going to open up my double seam here, poke my needle into both those seams and come up onto the fold. And that will just hide my knot inside of the fabric. And then I'm going to bring up this so it comes up and over. And I'm going to just place a pin here just so it's easy for me to demonstrate. And I just want to make sure that this seam is covering my stitch line on the other side so you don't see it. So now I'm going to come in to my other side right here, right above my stitch line. So it pulls my fabric over, making a little bit of a line, stitch line like that. And now I'm going to go back into the this fabric here and I'm going to try to grab it right onto the top, the edge fold here. And that will bring it nicely up and you won't even see that sewing line. I'm sorry that this quilt is old and I've got dog hair and I don't know what I've got in here. <laughs> It's been sitting around for 23 years. What do you what do you know? Huh? Like who who, <laughs> who knows what that is? <laughs> Again, so a little stitch right above my stitch line underneath. I'm gonna put this in the wash after, believe me. It's okay. It'll be nice and clean and fresh when I'm when I'm finished. And again, right up onto the edge of the fabric fold. and then just come directly above and then above the stitch line and move over and do your next horizontal stitch. And you just keep going along in that manner until you've sewn all your strips on. Now I was holding it up so I could get a really close view so you could see how to sew, but I find it easier just to put it on top of my knee here and just have it laying nice and flat. And that's just easier for me. And you don't have to worry about going through to the other side because you've got enough thicknesses here that that isn't going to happen. And this was the single sashing, no hand sewing required. It was done by the machine. And on the back side, this was done on the machine. And this is where I have hand stitched this together. And then you can just come back and then square up and cut off any excess sashing that you've got there. And then you'll be ready to sew them all together. So here's the two squares we did together. And that's exactly the same as what I've got here. I tried to match it up so you could see exactly how this works. So there's my two there. This is our sashing that got sewn on both sides. And there's our sashing that's sewn on one side. And then we hand stitched on this one. You're going to do exactly the same for the next square, matching up your pattern as you go along. So you want to make sure you do all your hand sewing on each one of these short strips before you sew them all together. Once you've got all that done, you're gonna start adding this strip to the next strip and to the next strip, all in the same manner as you did this. But you'll need to cut your strips as long as your quilt is. So I have cut one that's even longer actually, but that's fine, longer is better than shorter, at one, and one eighth inch. This is going to go on my top side here. And then I've cut one also for the back side, which was cut at one and three quarters and folded in half. And that is going to go on the back side, just like we did this one. So I'm gonna go along and I'm gonna match these all up with my open fold. So it's matching up all my seams and I'm going to sew along again, all the way along a quarter inch seam allowance. 
And again, quarter inch seam allowance, sew it all the way down, all the whole strip. If it tends to bunch up a bit, take your pin out and just smooth it out and bring it along again. I don't have a quilting or a walking foot on right on. I only have a quilting foot. Walking foot would help a little bit more. Just like before, but we've got the long strip. I'm going to bring this quilt over and I've got all these sewn together so you'd only have like little pieces till you got to the end but I've got all this to do now. So we're going to flip this so this is coming together on top like this. So, okay so I flipped it so it's together so these sides are together. This single one, this is the double one that with the fold. This is the single one. That's why I've placed this one together. You're pushing this one out. And then this is going to match up this raw edge with this raw edge. And now that you've got it lined up and you're ready to sew your single sashing, not the double, to your other side, what I want you to do is I want you to start where your sashing is because I want to make sure that your sashings are lined up. So you can see your sashing on the other side here and then just make sure that that's all nicely lined up and if it is that's great. And then when you put in your pin put it into your top sashing here and then you've got lots of room to come through with your sewing. Now let's go over to the next sashing right here. Again, check below and you can see here. Hopefully you can see. Okay, so I've just uh, zoomed in here for you. So you can see where if I was to pin, just go ahead and pin, you see how my sashing is a little bit further over to the right. Well, I'm just going to nudge that and bring it back so it's following all the way up and then pin that in place and then go back and then pin into the middle and then that will just make for a much prettier and cleaner looking quilt okay and do the same for all your other sashes to make sure they're lined up before you sew and now with my pins out of the way and I've got my guide again for my quarter inch seams and away I go and I can sew all the way down. So I'll just take out my pins and I'll show you what we've got. And on the side we just sewed there's all our raw edges that are now going to be enclosed when we bring this one over. And then on the other side this is the seam that we've just sewn that is now enclosed on both sides. Okay, I'm having a look at this quilt now. <laughs> and I've got one, two, three, four, five seams to all sew by hand. Now, this is how the original designer decided how to make this quilt. That doesn't mean that we have to do it that way. Why don't I machine quilt this as well? So I had a look in my book. I have a Faf Expression Line sewing machine and I'm just looking at some of my decorative stitches here. So I tried a few And here's some of them. I don't know what you think, but here's the one. I know it's a little bit hard to see, but it's little stitches that go further out and then further in. That was one. This one was just a plain cross, but it looks on the heavy side. I also tried another one, and it was more of a flower to one side and a little bit of a flower to the other side. Again, I don't think that's what I'm needing here. So I'm gonna go with a really basic um, quilting stitch. And I know this is hard to see on the black. Black on black is not easy, but all this is is a straight line 
just going across and on the back side it basically does the same but on an angle so i'm going to use that one and i'm going to just machine stitch all my seams down and if you have a quilting machine or any other machine that will do a little decorative stitch like that then by all means use it for all you quilters out there that are going oh my gosh you can't do that yes you can you can do whatever you want this is art and you can finish your quilt if it's a machine stitch quilt any way you want to so that's what we're gonna do and here we go i'm committed so i've pinned the all in place so it covers my stitch line underneath and it's nice and smooth and we're off and running so i am totally happy how that turned out the stitching isn't going into my other fabric it's just staying in the black you're going to have to look really close to see that but from a distance you can't tell that it's sewn on the top and hey if you wanted to take this to a quilt show for judging well maybe they would go poo poo but for me i've been working on this for 23 years and i want to get it finished so i'm going to continue to sew on my machine because this whole quilt is basically machine quilted so why not continue i'm going to continue with my other sashings yay all my sashings are sewn on a little bit of a cheat but i'm happy here's my front and the sashings are of course sewn on the back as well and now we're ready for our binding your quilt will probably be a different size than mine depending on the pattern you use and you can extend this out and make it bigger or make it smaller it's up to you but you're going to want to measure around all of your quilt to see what that measurement is and that's how much binding you need again as a recap for you i have cut lots of strips of my black because that's what i'm going to use for my binding and i've cut them at three and one half inches it does not matter where you start it doesn't have to be in the middle i will just start here so you can see on the different colored fabric and we're going to do a little trick when we get to the corner so we'll show you that so we've got our fold on this side here's our two open edges and we can just pin this around and we're going to be sewing a half inch seam allowance all the way around but when i get to the corner i'm going to stop at one quarter inch so i'm just going to put a pin at about a quarter inch here and that's just my reminder to stop sewing at that point and then start sewing there because you'll need this in order to open this up and close this binding together when we're finishing when we bring our two ends together so start sewing right here with a nice long tail and again you're going to sew in with your half inch seam allowance and here's my mark so i'm only going to sew up to my pin and then i will my thread and then what we're going to do is this fabric is going to come up and so you've got this corner right on that corner you can fold that down so you've got a diagonal line forming here corner to this corner and then you can hold your fingers here and then this is going to come back down again on top of itself like so okay so now we're going to put this i'm just going to pin this so i don't lose it we're going to bring this around and we're going to start down our other side now and we're going to start one quarter inch away from the top edge but you want to be again half an inch in and then we start sewing again you'll have to keep adjusting your quilt because you've got a lot of fabric to deal with here but it's not 
undoable. So then you don't really have to pin it. You just need to keep watching that your edges are together here and maintaining that half an inch seam allowance. And keep going until you get your next corner. So I brought the camera on the left side to see if that helps you see what I'm doing with my corner. Again, I'm gonna come up until quarter inch, maintaining my half inch this way, but I'm gonna end quarter inch before this edge here. I'm gonna cut my thread. I've stopped sewing a quarter inch. What I'm gonna do is I'm lifting this up and I'm forming a diagonal line right here. So I'm going corner to corner. Now I'm gonna fold from this point and I'm gonna bring that back down. So it's sitting on the top edge like so. Okay. Hopefully that was a better viewing for you and you've got that figured out. And now I'm going to turn my quilt and now I'm going to sew down the next edge. From here, I'm going to only come down a quarter inch from the top, but I'm also going to come in my half inch this way. I need to come over a little bit more and down a quarter and that's where I'm going to start my sewing. When you get about 10, 12 inches away from the beginning, you want to stop and take it off the machine because what we're going to do is we're going to bring these two ends together now and sew them together and then continue our binding. Okay, so we've taken it off the machine and we're going to piece our two pieces of binding together so they're one unit. So we need to open up this one and then just try to lie it flat like that. And we're going to open up this one and just bring it back. And you're going to bring these two up until they are lying flat on the quilt. I'm going to put a pin right at the bottom here so I know that's my sewing line. So I'm just going to put it right down to the bottom here. Okay so now I know where I need to sew. I can just let this lift up in the middle here and you can probably tack it down a little bit with some pins or something just to keep this bunched up because we need to get into this part here so we can sew this on the sewing machine. And I'm just keeping this parallel, these two pieces here, and that will help so I make sure that I'm sewing straight through. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to draw a, a line and then I know I've got my straight sewing line. And now if you're doing this, I got a little bit too close on my sewing here. I probably should have left more unsewn on this side and then I wouldn't be so close to up here. That was my mistake. So I'm just telling you so you don't make the same mistake. So what I'm going to do is match up my ruler to the edge of my fabric here so I can get a nice straight line across where that pin is. So right there and I know that that is my sewing line. Okay so I'm going to take that to the machine and we'll sew across. And then just give it a check before you cut off these ends here and see how you did and it's lying not too bad, fairly flat. So I think we're good. So I'm just going to cut the excess off here that we don't need. Can finger press the seam open. I'm 
fold it back up. And now that you've done all your wonderful mitered corners, and now all we're doing is we're taking this and we're going to flip this to the other side. And there's your mitered corner. Just go around and check to see how your seams are. And it looks like I got a little bit uh, big on my actual seam here. This one's perfect right there, as you can see, because it's covering my stitch line. So if that happened to you too, just go along and trim it back. Be careful not to cut your binding, but just come back in and uh, trim it up if you have to. It looks like I will have to. That's okay. It's not the end of the world. We're just gonna make it so it's just a little bit better for when I do. And for this side, you're just going to bring your material following your sewing line right over the edge here and you're going to bring that right up to a corner here and then this edge comes down and then you've made your mitered corner on your other side i am so close to finishing this 23 year old quilt okay i have gone around and pinned all my binding on now the original instructions were to hand sew this seam down now i've sewed the one side and then of course this side is open you can by all means go around and hand stitch which is the traditional way to do it but you know i'm a bit lazy so i am going to do the same quilt stitch i did for my sashing and i'm going to machine stitch this on that's just what I'm gonna do. And here I go. Machine stitching my binding on. Because I want to. <laughs> wow. Boy, does this feel good seeing this finished. I can't believe I left something for 23 years. I've obviously got a very busy life. But the moral of the story is I wouldn't leave things that long and you probably wouldn't. It's just something that happened to me. But the reason I'm saying that is that my black, I might have used like a cheaper broadcloth, which is unusual for me because I usually use everything 100% cotton or it might have been cotton, I don't know. But some of the black I noticed was just starting to rip a little bit. And so it might not hold up in the wash. <sighs> Anyways. I'm not going to fret about it because the way this is designed in the stripes like this, um, I could easily just put in another section or cover up a section in the black. And it's, that would be like a crazy quilt. I mean, in the old days, if a part of a quilt got worn, what did they do? They just grabbed another piece of fabric, popped it on top and sewed it on. Another piece got worn, pop on another piece. And that's how crazy quilts were done. Now this one um, is wonderful because when you're making this, you get two quilts in one. So you've got this side and you've got the reverse side. So you've got two quilts in one, which is just fantastic. I love the design of that. So if you want to know how to make crazy quilts, I have another project that's been sitting in a bin for even longer. Can you believe that? And we're going to finish that one next time. So keep watching and you'll see my crazy quilt come to life and be finished. So if you don't want to miss that crazy quilt, then hit that notification bell and you'll make sure you get notified when I have published that video. Until then, I'm going to pop this in the wash on a very gentle cycle and I'm going to use this and enjoy it. Until next time, bye-bye.